thank you so much for staying with us. A lot of Nigerians are smiling now that the Super Eagles have qualified for the FIFA World Cup. Kayade has that and other stories on Sports News. Welcome to Sports News. Nigeria Super Eagles have become the first African side to qualify for the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia. This follows a 1-0 win over Zambia. Needing a victory to seal qualification in Group B, the Eagles were largely matched pound for pound by the Zambians until Alex Iwobi scored what turned out to be the winner in the 74th minute. Not the very best of four passes. Yeah, they come. They some Eagles trying to push up. Iwobi. But uh, and the cross comes. And it's a goal for Nigeria. Finally, it is Alex Iwobi who puts the Nigerians in front. That's what he was brought on to do. That was the deciding moment with 13 points from five games. Nigeria advanced to a sixth FIFA World Cup finals with one round of matches left in the qualifiers. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari has congratulated the Super Eagles on their qualification for next year's FIFA World Cup in Russia. President Buhari described the hard end of victory over Zambia as a 57th independence anniversary gift to the nation and urged the team to stay focused when they begin preparing for the World Cup. He also promised that the federal government will continue to support the team within available resources. Elsewhere, world number one Rafael Nadal will play Australia Nick Krios in the China Open final on Sunday. Nadal, who is chasing a sixth title of the season, beat Bulgarian Grigor Dimitrov 6-3, 4-6 and 6-1. Dimitrov battled back from a set down to force a decider but lost his way as Nadal broke three times for his fourth final in Beijing. And Lewis Hamilton will start Sunday's Japanese Grand Prix in pole ahead of title rival Sebastian Vettel and teammate Voltari Bottas. On a day he clinched his first Suzuka pole, Hamilton was 0.332 seconds quicker than Bottas after two almost perfect laps. Vettel, meanwhile, was 0.472 seconds off the pace but will start alongside Hamilton on the front row after Botas was penalized for a gearbox change. That's all on Sports News. Many thanks for watching. Melinda is back in just a moment. The United Nations Human Rights Wing is asking the government of Cameroon and dissatisfied groups in the country to engage in a dialogue as a way to address prevailing grievances. This comes against the backdrop of multiple strikes and demonstrations in the Anglophone regions following resentment and tensions over what they see as discrimination against them in favor of majority French-speaking population. The spokesperson for the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Mr. Rupert Corville, who spoke to journalists in Geneva, also called for an impartial and effective investigation into Sunday's violence in which at least 10 people were killed. Supporters of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny defied the reins and gathered at Central Moscow's Pushkin Square today, demanding that President Vladimir Putin resign. 
Lavalli, who is serving a 20-day jail term for violating rules on public meetings, is said to have called for the rally in Moscow and other cities across Russia to coincide with Putin's 65th birthday. For almost 18 years, Putin has dominated the country's political landscape and may be eyeing a fourth term next year. Navalny hopes to run too, despite ruling a ruling by the Central Election Commission, which disqualified him. There's a large crowd in Madrid and Barcelona as Catalonia await the declaration of their independence and resolve the lingering crisis. The Catalan authorities maintain that a majority supported a split from Spain, but Madrid says it's illegal under the country's 1978 constitution. The political standoff, acclaimed the worst in decades, has divided the country, pushed banks and companies to move their headquarters outside Catalonia and shaken a market confidence in the Spanish economy. The European Commission is asking the Catalan and Spanish leaders to find a political solution and quickly too. A state of emergency has been declared in four southern U.S. states as Hurricane Nate gathers strength to heading towards New Orleans. The residents are already gearing up for the tropical storm to avoid a repeat of the destruction by Hurricane Katrina 12 years ago. Hurricane Nate swirled towards the U.S. Gulf Coast on Friday, killing at least 25 people in Nicaragua, Costa Rica and Honduras in Central America. The city's mayor has ordered the evacuation of residents in low-lying areas. Expected to move into the Gulf of Mexico by this evening, a farm into a hurricane and potentially approach the Louisiana coast by Saturday evening. Uh, our greatest threats, though, from this particular storm, because everyone is different, uh, is not necessarily rain, but strong winds and storm surge. I am ordering a mandatory evacuation of Venetian Isles, Lake Catherine, and the Irish Bayou areas of the city of New Orleans. And the main news again. The Nigeria Labour Congress today took to the streets of Abuja to protest against alleged anti-labour practices at the headquarters of MTN Nigeria and the Office of the Environmental Board in Abuja. Also today, another Nigerian was shot dead in South Africa over a 7,500 Naira parking lot debt. And the Super Eagles of Nigeria today qualified for the Russia 2018 World Cup after beating the Chief Polo of Zambia one goal to nil at the Godwin Akwabio Stadium in Uyu, the Akwabio State capital. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Melinda Akiwani. Thank you.